Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Bears Workshop, who actually has his own YouTube channel based on electrification, so I'll be sure to link that below. Barry, thanks for choosing to support the channel. To kick off today's video, I wanna focus on Tesla's net income. I've been sensing some frustration and anxiety in the Tesla community over the past few weeks. So if you're out there and you're kind of struggling, maybe losing conviction, I just want to remind you guys, this is what we really should be focusing on. Tesla's net income over time. Now, yes, in quarter two, this may level off, come down. Regardless, your eyes should not be on quarter two as much as they should be on 2023 and beyond. So every now and then if you're stressed out from all of the noise and headlines and you feel yourself getting lost, just come back to what really matters. And also remember that Tesla has only been consistently profitable since quarter one of 2020. That's just over two years in the grand scheme of things, still a baby when it comes to a profitable company. So Tesla is just getting warmed up and you can rest in this trend that is going to continue. Thinking about the future, total addressable markets and everything that Tesla has in the future, it's just one of the most no brainer exciting companies out there in my humble opinion. So hopefully you can hold on to that through all of the noise that we will keep hearing. Boken Reviews, still out here hustling, uploaded another video with a new 4680 Model Y, this time using the Tessie app to try to confirm the size of the battery pack. I just wanna say, although this test basically got us to that 67.5 kilowatt hour usable battery pack size, I would not take this as gospel as this is once again just based on some charging estimates like we've already been over in the past. However, this would be one more data point, the Tessie app confirming the usable capacity of this new 4680 pack of around 67, 68 kilowatt hours. As far as I know, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, one of the best ways to figure out the real world data of these battery packs is to use the Scan My Tesla app and the OBD connection tool. This is Bjorn Nyland testing one of the earlier Model Ys and you can see it gives you all kinds of different information. I'll link this video below just in case you're wondering. A quick note here, Gary Black was assuming that some of these production challenges that Elon mentioned in that interview that was a few weeks ago, specifically mentioning Austin's use of the new 4680 cells may be likely already fixed. I can assure you that so far they have not been fixed. There are still some production challenges and some chemistry things that Tesla is working on specifically with the 4680s. We're just going to have to give Tesla some time to work these things out, employ patience as I always say. They will get sorted out in my opinion, however, it's just going to take some time. Here we have this Twitter thread from Robert Scoble. Now, if you're not familiar, he's basically a tech writer, blog writer. He used to work for Microsoft and now he kind of advanced is cutting edge technology and is a tech nut like many of us. So we have to keep that in mind with this tech thread. However, let's see what he says. One more thing actually. So this thread is going to be building up hype pretty significantly for Tesla's unveil of its Optimus bot toward the end of September. That said, I am personally still keeping my expectations in the basement. I do not want to get my expectations up and then have them not be met. I'm going to absolutely expect basically nothing. If Optimus can move or do anything, I will consider myself to be impressed, but let's go through this anyway. Robert says the Tesla bot will blow everyone away because of the simulator it has. Now, this is not the Tesla bot. This is another robot lab in Silicon Valley. He just got a tour of. So Robert just talked to this company, Giant AI Talks, who has this real working robot in its lab. Now from this tour, he's saying he's hearing the Tesla robot has done many billions of things in the simulator it has built. Robert then goes over some expected potential demos like the bot driving a car, getting out, opening the trunk, picking up a pizza, delivering it to Elon, playing catch with Elon, different things like that. I, I'm not sure what to make of all of that. However, more important than Robert's speculation on the demo would be his reasoning for his confidence. He says, Tesla's simulator has gone next level. It gives Tesla superpowers that no other company has, not even this company, Giant AI, that's been invested in by Bill Gates and others. Robert goes on saying, Elon is starting to understand the role of virtual reality and augmented reality in the world of these next level AI robots. Giant AI lets a human jump into the robot itself and do all sorts of things like train it to do a new job on a manufacturing line. 
And he says, either way, my expectations for Tesla's AI day has gone way up because of what Giant showed me and because of what I have learned about Tesla's simulator. In it, a robot already is walking through snow and mud and sand and many other surfaces. So while we don't know much of anything for sure, what we do know is that Elon believes Tesla is the world's leading AI company. It has insane computing power, some of the best, most data trained neural nets on the planet. So I will say my expectations have jumped up a little bit but I am going to actively suppress them so as to not be disappointed you can do whatever you would like all right guys can we agree that health is true wealth I know some people are in health situations beyond their control but we all should be doing what we can to optimize our well-being if Tesla stock goes to thirty thousand dollars a share but we can't enjoy it then what's the point that's partly why I chose athletic greens as a sponsor for the channel I genuinely believe in this product and the quality and importance of the ingredients and I've had this drink every day dating back to last year I was bombarded with products and supplements during my time in the fitness industry and AG1 is one of maybe three that have passed my rigorous filters AG1 is independently certified by NSF in an ongoing fashion I found it in a Lex Friedman video researched a bit and was hooked it's pretty much the only reason I can work out with James Conner and continue functioning the next day more on my relationship with James next week. Every serving of AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics that when taken consistently can support gut health, energy, immunity, recovery, and focus. It's quick and easy too. One scoop in eight ounces of water and your superfood cocktail is ready to enjoy. AG1 has also offered to provide a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free travel packs with every new purchase if you use my link in the description below. Genuinely guys, I firmly believe it's at least worth giving it a try. We have Felipe from Fiat Group World putting together this study, if you will, compiling data from 106 different countries that is representing 99.3% of the global auto sales for 2021. To be specific, let's call it 106 markets instead of countries. Here we have the top eight, and remember this is all cars, not just electric vehicles. Scroll down a touch and you see the Tesla Model 3, the ninth best-selling car globally of any car type with 508,000 global sales. Scroll down a bit further and you'll see the Model Y coming in 19th with 392,000 sales and give it a bit more time on the market and most people are expecting it to overtake the Model 3 by the end of this year. So for 2022, we could definitely and we'll probably see the Model Y in the top 10 with the Model 3 if it can hold that spot. And guys, listen, if this trend continues and the Model Y ends up in the top 10 for 2022, this will be a vehicle with an average sale price in the 60,000s, maybe pushing 70,000 given price hikes. So that is going to mean huge revenue figures for Tesla. And one more reason to just ease your fears and trust that it's going to be okay as a Tesla investor. Bloomberg has decided to jump into the mix on what's coming at Giga Shanghai when it comes to factory shutdowns for retooling upgrades. Here's a new data point. According to people familiar with the matter, now Giga Shanghai is looking to be going through upgrades through early August instead of the two week max that we were hearing yesterday that would have been the beginning of July to around the middle of July. So we talked about the two week shutdown in July for Model Y retooling yesterday. Now we're learning this, which is new. Another person said Tesla will make similar tweaks to its Model 3 production line for a 20 day period starting July 18th. That would thus take it into August. And Bloomberg is saying that these upgrades should be complete around August 7th. Ultimately, Tesla might not even know when all of these upgrades will be done officially due to unknown unknowns. However, it sounds like the beginning of July, there may be a complete factory shutdown for Model Y changes for a few days, and then there will be tweaks to the Model Y line for another week or two. Then once that is handled, maybe they'll shift to Model 3 tweaks. So far, there's been no confirmation of a full shutdown for these Model 3 line tweaks. But once again, zooming out, just know you don't need to get lost in the weeds in the detail. Tesla is making upgrades to build more cars, to sell more vehicles. It's all good. Two years from now, the detail won't matter. I just want you guys to know if you don't enjoy focusing on the dates and the details and the numbers like some of us, that's absolutely okay. Just get to the heart of what's going on. 
hold on to that and then move on and understand that it's all good. Sawyer tweeted out very early this morning that if anyone was in Miami, apparently for a short amount of time, there were 4680 Model Ys available in Tesla's inventory, which would definitely be a change of pace. Clicking on that link right now brings us here. There are still some available only for delivery in Miami. How do we know that they're the 4680 pack? Because they're the 279 mile of range, all wheel drive Model Y, not long range, not performance. If you have sticker shock looking at the prices up here, these are with all of the upgrades and most of these do indeed have the full self-driving option selected. In case you see 269 miles of range, just know the discrepancy from 279 is due to the upgraded 20 inch wheels. So Tesla being very cautious and methodical and interesting with the release of this 4680 pack Model Y out of Austin. No confirmation yet on why they're doing this. I'll keep my eyes and ears to the ground, but for now, just know that it's there if you're interested. I wanted to share this update from Gene Munster and Loop Ventures on Tesla. They track the average lead time for Teslas in these markets you can see right here. And they conclude the average lead times for these models have increased 10% since April this year, now averaging 8.5 months. Observations of the Model S and X showed lead times increasing by 12% over just the past two months, now sitting around 12 months on average. In case it wasn't clear, the average wait time of 8.5 months was for both the 3 and Y. There were more than a few headlines today talking about Biden in the White House now relying on Tesla, making it seem like it's something new, asking Tesla for advice and being all chummy buddy buddy, but once you read the article, that's not really what's going on. Four articles I've read from bigger publications are all talking about initial contact from Biden and his administration first days in office and as we know things have really soured since then so how much talking is really going on it's anyone's guess the meetings however were about rfs the renewable fuel standard a federal policy mandating certain minimum percentage of fuel sold in the states must be renewable the administration was looking to update the policy to benefit purely electric vehicles as well a quick summary of the rfs renewable fuel standards they're looking to make some policy changes once again to potentially include evs in this tax credit world this is a multi-billion dollar market for credits these are known as rin Yes, different than the credits Tesla has been earning for years. Early signs are that the administration is leaning toward a rule that benefits car makers like Tesla, giving them the greatest access to ERINS or electric RINs. A director of federal policy said, we've heard through the grapevine that car companies are really, really going to like this rule. The idea of including EVs in the RFS has been under consideration for years. So is this or next year, the year it'll finally get done? It's anyone's guess. And we don't really have any detail on these potential policy changes yet, but apparently Tesla is seeking changes to the RFS that would allow it to earn renewable fuel credits based on kilowatt hours driven or similar metrics. So we'll definitely watch this in the months to come. We have Ford losing some top talent, but the good news is it's going to a shift digital, which should help the legacy automakers transition to these new digital sale experiences. So it's a very important space. Van Dyke, who is leaving Ford said, consumer purchasing habits are dramatically changing as more individuals embrace the digital buying experience. And it's critical that auto Makers and dealers deliver an exceptional consumer experience at the brand level and dealers' individual sites. Since early 2021, Van Dyke served as the CEO of Ford Direct, a joint venture between the company and its retail network tasked with helping dealers sell more vehicles with data-based marketing and advertising. There's been a lot of talk lately about Apple's new CarPlay and its next-gen CarPlay that should be coming next year that will also be able to control car functions like HVAC and more. Polestar, which is so far my second favorite EV company behind, yes, Tesla, just announced today it's bringing the current version of CarPlay to Polestar 2 EVs with an over-the-air software update. It will, however, require connecting your iPhone via a wire or a cord. But Polestar says it does plan to be an early adopter of Apple's next-gen CarPlay experience. This is a big deal because Polestar was one of the first auto companies to use the embedded Google OS for automotive, which allows you to use all of the Google native apps without actually connecting your phone. So now buying a Polestar, you'll have that embedded native Google OS system and now Apple CarPlay with the wired connection. 
That'll do it for today. Don't forget, check out AG1 linked below. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.